Hey, welcome back. It's time for another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jellin from Mr. Excel. I'll be joined by Mike Gervin from Excel is Fun. This is our episode 155. Who is not signed off per contract? All right, Mike, we have a doozy today. Let's just concentrate over here on uh, columns A through G, and I'll explain the problem. The, the big problem that we have is here's a single document. Uh, they have six rows for this document. Uh, the title only appears once, the date only appears once, and that's a problem for another day. Um, but here's the issue. The reason why we have six rows is this document has to be signed off by these six people. These six people. And whatever system is using this allows these six people to choose any of the six signature spots and sign. So Jay Smith uh, came along and he signed first. And then Adam West came along and he didn't choose row two, he just chose some random row. Right? He picked a, a blank spot, and I've seen this. I, I've been on a school board, and people just choose where to sign, although this is some computerized wacko version of choose where to sign. And so we need to figure out, of these six people, who have already signed? And actually, what we need to find out is who still needs to sign. All right, so there's the problem. Here's how I solved this. Uh, I started out with a temporary formula out here that says where does this contract start so look for this contract in all of column a an exact match and for all of the rows of doc one two three it says it starts in row two but for all the rows of doc two three four b it says it starts in row eight how many rows in this contract all right so that's a simple count if count how many times in column a we have this document it is sorted by document number so that helps us all right and then here I'm just going to hover here to show you the concept of what I wanted to do I want to say hey let's go do a match of this name in column D through F2 to F7 to see if they've signed yet all right but that's the tricky part because the F2 to F7 you would tend to want to do an offset there but offset is a volatile function so check this out uh, I think this formula is the cool formula in the podcast, at least for me. Um, so I'm doing the match of D2, but instead of saying that I want to look from F2 to F7, I put an index here. Now index usually returns a value, but it turns out if the index is followed by a colon or preceded by a colon, it actually returns the cell address. All right, so we're saying, hey, look for D2 within the I2. So that's the second value in column F. Um, and then go to I2 plus J2, which is 2 plus 6, 1 too many, uh, minus 1. So this, in essence, right here, is referring to F2 to F7, comma, 0. All right, so that test formula, sure enough, is saying, hey, Jones B has uh, not signed yet. Um, Dylan M has not signed yet, but West A has signed. All right, so once I had that formula working, then over here, uh, just a big is N A. Um, then I bring the value over, otherwise, quote, quote. So this is a list of all the people who have not signed. Uh, and then came down here to the bottom and said, hey, if this is the same contract as what's below, pull the previous list of who hasn't signed, otherwise, blank, blank, with this current who hasn't signed. And so, you know, as this uh, rolls up here, the very first line for each contract is going to be a list of all the people who have not signed. Although, we're going to have some extra spaces appearing uh, for every person who did sign. Uh, and then finally, uh, this here is a VLOOKUP of uh, this document number, uh, the 13th column, to get the top value for those who need to sign. And wrap that in trim to get rid of the extra spaces. Uh, so I was able to shorten that whole thing uh, down to just a couple of columns columns H and I are temporary columns, hid those, and we have the complete list of people who need to sign. Very convoluted, and, and it works, but Mike, boy, I'm hoping you have an easier way to go. Ah, uh, thanks, Mr. Excel. Uh, I do not know how to do this. Can't get them all into a single cell. I know there's more funk add-in, but I can't get it to work on my computer and haven't since 2010. 
All right. I, I don't know how to do that, but I am going to try and get the names every time we see a first document into cells. So if there's three names, they'll be in three different cells. And as Mr. Excel pointed out, we need a dynamic range. We first, in this, as we copy a formula down this far, we need to look there and there. Ah, but when we get down to copying the formula down here, we need to look at a different range, dynamically move. And when, if we can create these two dynamic ranges, we're going to ask the question, are any of these over in this list? Oh, we're going to ask really the opposite. Are any of these not over in this list? Because that's what we're after. And then we'll extract the names. All right, Mr. Excel used the beautiful index colon index. I love that and use that a lot. But here, let me show you offset. Offset is volatile. So if it's not a big data set, no problem. The reference, well, I'm always going to start here, F4 to lock in all directions, comma, and then I need to know, move down a number of rows. And in fact, I'm going to move this up here so we can move down one to get to Jones. And then we're down here. We'll move down, I think, eight. So I'm going to use the match in the rows, match. And I'm going to say, hey, go look up this. Now I'm actually going to copy this formula and define names. And that's going to need to be locked as we go this way, but relative as we copy down. So I'm going to hit the F4 key three times. That will actually cause a problem with our defined names, but we'll see how to deal with that. Comma, please look that up here. Within that whole range, Mr. Excel highlighted the whole column. I'm just going to highlight the whole first column of the data set, F4, and then comma 0. And that's important for duplicates, because now match, when it looks up a duplicate, it's always going to get the first one. When we copy it down here to this cell, it will get the position of that, which is, I think, 8, right? 7, 8. So that's how many it will move down from that starting position, right? So for the second range, it'll count 8 down, and boom, that'll be the starting position. So rows is working off of that right there. Comma, columns, we don't need to move over any. So I'm going to, from that starting position, so I'm going to comma, and then the height, it's a simple count if. I'm going to say the whole range, F4, comma, and then that first one right there. F4, one, two, three times close parentheses. Finally, the width, we don't need it because it's 1. It'll assume whatever the width is from that reference, close parentheses. Now I'm going to Control-Shift-Enter and copy this down just to check it out. Notice right here, if I hit F9, boom, it's looking, whoa, at that whole range there. Escape anywhere in this blue range. When I highlight it, offset will deliver a dynamic range. Fife to Parker, Fife to Parker, and then same down here. Now we need to get our second range here and then here. I'm going to call that SI, and we only need to do one thing different. So copy in edit mode, paste it. We're going to move this, and I'm going to move it using my move cursor. Bloop, so that'll be our starting position. Control, Shift, Enter. Well, I'm just entering them here. We're going to put them up in define names, but we can check this out. Now it's looking F9 from West, 500 Smith Parker 0. There it is. Now I'm going to put this up in define names, and here's the problem. When you have anything that's relative, you actually have to click in the cell. We're going to use it here and copy it over and down. So I'm going to click in that cell before I open up the dialog box to paste this name. And now copy, escape, click there, Control F3, new. I'm going to call this RE for requested. Highlight Control V, click OK, and I'm going to test it right here, right? Test. Ooh, it looks like it's got it right. Untest, click Close. Now I'm going to go get the second one. Copy in Edit Mode, Escape, click there, Control F3, New, talk, call this one SI. Let's paste this down here, Control V, click OK, and I'm going to test it looking good. Now I need a count. I need to know how many are not from this here are not over here. So I'm going to create a third name and call it CO. Come down here, and we're going to use our define names. Equals count a of RE. Now, RE is this requested range. That's all of them. Minus count a. We're counting text here. So we're going to do that of SI. So I'm going to do SI, right? And so that will calculate all the way down. Now I typed a 1. I think I'm going to put an I. Be very careful there. Click OK. Uh, click close. Just for kicks, I'm going to say equals CO, control enter, double click, and send it down. We could test this. If all of a sudden I had Kent over here as a signed person, boom, it's giving me two all the way down, control Z. Now, I also want 
uh, column before I show this over here, I want to actually list the document. And then we're going to have just the names here. And then on the next row where there's new document, I want the document name in there. So I'm going to say equals if anytime relative cell reference you're not equal to the one below, then I want to see the document. And I want to join it in double quote space equal sign and double quote. Otherwise, double quote, double quote, null text string, close parentheses. Control enter, so double, double click and send it down. Now we're going to use that same logic of when these two are not equal, because at first we're going to copy this formula down. It's a big array formula. It's going to be running all over the place. But I'm going to turn it off so the formula doesn't run down here using that same logical test. Now we can use the index lookup. We're looking up from the requested column. So I'm going to for the array RE. And here's the problem, comma, row number. We have a bunch of matches, position 1, 2, and 6 for this first range that we need to extract. So row number. As I copy it across the columns, I need 1, 2, and then 6 relative positions. So I'm either going to use small to extract the row numbers from the array I'm going to create, or I'm going to use aggregate and then use the 15th function. 14 to 19 do array, the rest do not. So I'm going to say 15. The reason I'm using aggregate is because it can use make an array calculation without control shift enter. Comma 6, because I'm going to have an error from division. Comma, and now what do I need for the array right here? I need a bunch of row numbers. So watch this row, and I'm going to use RE. Right now, row RE, that's dynamic. It's from requested. Row will give me 1 to 7. But when I copy the formula down, then it will get row 8 to 14. So watch this. Further, normally when we create an array of relative positions, we use row of the whole range minus row of the first one. But this is dynamic right here. For the first one, I need row 2. And down here, I need row 8. So I'm going to say minus min of this row. So it will always be looking through the dynamic range. Row will spit out an array of numbers, and min will get the smallest. That will give me, actually right now, if I hit this and highlight this and hit F9, it gives me 0 to 5, right? 0 to 5, Control Z. Down here, it will give me 0 to 13, but I need to add one back in. All right, so that I have to put in parentheses for this array, because that's going to be in the numerator. So then we divide. And here's our famous little comparing two lists to see what's not in a list. And it's is NA. That'll catch the NAs from the match that's finding relative positions. And the trick here is that we need to look up these values here, all of them. But that's the wrong range. Sorry, I highlighted that's RE. We need to look up all of those as the lookup value. This is a function argument array operation within SI, right? So SI, comma, 0 because they're not sorted. And watch this. Because we're looking up the REs first, these over here, we're saying, what's the relative position of these over here when I hit F9? NA, NA. Those are the two we're after. And then 4, 5, 1, because we did this range as lookup, it found Smith, which is 4. And then NA, NA West, which is 3, or uh, 4, 5. So 5, which is 5, Smith, which is 1. And there we go. And then the NA will pick the NAs up, which is what we're after, Control-Z. Close parentheses. If we highlight just the NA part in F9, it gives me true, true, and then a true at the very end. Boom. Those are, those are the markers, in essence, for the names we want. When we do the division, the whole array, that gives me 1, 2, and 6. Those are the relative positions in this first range of the names we want to extract, meaning they haven't signed. Control Z. Now, comma, we need a k. As we go this way, we need to extract from the small function first, second, third. So I'm going to use columns. And I'm sitting in k2. So dollar sign k2, colon k2, close parentheses. I'm going to have to use that k again. So I'm going to copy it just for a moment. Now, I can close off the aggregate. Watch these screen tips. Close off that. Now, I'm seeing the row number. The 
aggregate will deliver the right row number as we copy it to the side, close parenthesis on that. I don't have to control shift enter, just control enter, copy it over and down. Check that out. Now it's working. We got, oh, look down here at its first um, document, two, three, four, B, Kent. Jones, Dylan, those are exactly the ones that are have not signed. Now we need to add some criteria. As we copy to the side, we need to turn this formula off when we get past the count of three. And we need to turn all of these off because these two items are the same. So I'm going to edit mode and do an if. And there's two conditions. So I'm using and in the logical test. The first one is that F4, F4, F4 lock the column but not the row. Are you not equal to the one below F4, a bunch lock the column but not the row, comma, to get to the second logical test? And then I'm going to say columns, control V. That means one, two, three, four. Anytime you are less than or equal to our count, which is CO, close parentheses. So those two tests, whoops, I didn't type a comma. Those two tests right there will be run. And if it's true, it'll run the index. Otherwise, comma, value if false. And that's important that we do the double quote here and if and logical test and not if error, because this big, huge array with all these dynamic ranges is going to be running a lot, especially with the fact that I use offset. I don't have to control shift enter, just control enter, copy it over and double click and send it down if I come down here and test it. So now Kent has signed over here and boom, just like that. <sighs> Throw it back to Mr. Excel. Mike. Mike, that was a that was a softball question. That was a, that was a that was a easy easy underhanded toss. I fear you're going to say that all of this stuff that I did here, all of these four columns could be completely replaced by a count ifs. Go see how many times this contract has this person, which will give me a list of all the people who have not signed. Just join them together and we're done. Although the joke is probably on both of us. Someone in the YouTube comments is going to come up with some formula that's uh, 12 characters long that solves this whole thing. But uh, I want to thank everyone for uh, stopping by. We'll see you next week for another Dueling Excel podcast from Mr. Excel and Excel is fun.